Welcome along guys, well it's a frosty December morning. I haven't ridden a bike for about three weeks. Last bike I rode was the H2, which was probably about three weeks ago I suspect. I'm out today because I have been loaned by Triumph UK the fantastic Scrambler 1200XE. Now this is the, the £12,500 version, the XE version, not the XC version. This is more the upper class one for the posh people. There's a couple of extras on this machine worth a quick mention. First of all, this one has the arrows. Beautiful, gives it a lovely little tone. This one also has the upper mounted front mudguard in aluminium. Normally they're down here, that's mounted higher. Looks way better like that. A few other little bits, but we we'll go through all that on the walk around. So for now, let's uh, get the gloves on and let's head out. Chop Z, roll the intro. It's extremely slippery on this uh, <laughs> path. So this one, this bike also has the same instrument cluster, which is on the uh, Rocket 3. Which I'm a big fan of this instrument cluster. I know some people don't like it. I'm a bit of a fan. You've also got to pull the clutch before you start it in the usual Triumph fashion. Just mounting the bike already, I feel like Steve McQueen or James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there is a 007 version of this bike. This bike is going to be making an appearance in... I'm going to go left, actually. Oh, they dropped it already. Oh, my goodness, it's quite heavy. I can tell I haven't ridden for a while. I'm a bit... I'm a bit... Uh, I'm a bit out of practice. I'm a little bit out of practice, I feel. This bike is quite heavy. As I say, I nearly... I nearly, nearly lost it already. This is 207 kilos dry. So it's probably 220, 220 fueled. How much road do you want, love? See, as I was trying to say before I nearly uh, slipped off of her, this bike will be making an appearance in the new Bond movie. Whatever it's called, I can't remember, but 007 rides a Triumph, a blacked out one. So they've actually released a special edition of this bike, all black, 007 insignias on it. All sold out. I think there's only 250 globally and they've sold out already. But that was £18,500. And really, that bike is exactly the same spec. It's an XE like this, but with some 007 trinkets on. It's got the arrows, it's got that high level front mud guard. But yeah, this is really the same spec as the grand 007 edition. Hmm, which money penny. Well, he always did have an inflated opinion of himself. It's got some grunt. This is a 1200cc parallel twin, 270 degree crank, so big bang crank if you like. It's 189 horsepower, 200, oh sorry, 200, 110 newton meters of torque. It's slightly down on power than the speed twin, even though this is the same engine that is in the speed twin. This has been tuned for more torque lower down the rev range. Maximum torque on this bike is, I believe, at 4,000 revs, whereas on the Speed Twin, it's at 5,000 revs. So it's a little bit less power, but the torque is lower down the rev range to give you more grunt. So for a Scrambler, this type of style bike, that's what you want, grunt! So what about the Ergos, Chopsy? You've been on it 10 minutes. Tell us how it feels to ride. Well, it's very comfortable. The seat feels nicely padded. It's, you know, it's just sat at that perfect position, really. Very wide bars, really wide bars. A lot of leverage through those. And uh, you feel quite low. My ass feels quite low to the ground. I'm not sure what the seat height is on this bike. I know they're not particularly small bikes. I'll flash it on the screen what the seat height is, but it doesn't feel overly tall. I mean, I'm six foot two. I'm 18 and a half stone, so I'm a big old unit. I can obviously touch the ground easily on this, but it doesn't feel like a tall bike. The arrows gives it a nice throb, nice throbbing exhaust note, but it's not massively loud. You know, these are like the street legal arrows, so they've got all the baffling in. They're fully street legal, so 
you know, I'd like a bit more volume. That's not really quite enough volume for me. So maybe you can get those baffles out somehow. I know they normally just tack weld them in. So they are welded in, but just like with a tack weld. So you can bang them about, you can sometimes even pull them out. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I am on a triumph. <coughs> just call me Daniel Craig. Oh, no, let's go this way. Morning, yes, I know I'm very cool. I know I feel cool, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, I know, it's cool, isn't it? That's one thing about this bike, you just do feel cool riding it. Oh, we're getting mucky. Oh, I'm getting sprayed in my face with muck as well. Are you clean? Or have you been splattered? This is, this is shit. This is, this is excrement on the road. This is, the farmers have been excrementing up the field and it's all over this road. It stinks. Oh. Oh my word, and because they've got the high mud guard, it's spraying off the front wheel and coming up here. <laughs> oh. oh, I haven't covered you in excrement, have I? There we go, I think we're past it now. All sprayed up my legs. Bloody lovely. So tell me, Q, what extras does this old girl have? Well, I've been informed by Q Division that the XE version, the XE version has an IMU, which the XE version doesn't. So this one's IMU'd up. The bigger, longer travel suspension. You've got an extra off-road mode as well on the XC. You have a, what's up there? I think that's an off-road, I think that's off-road there. I'm not going that way. On the XC, you have um, a rider mode where you can, I think it's called Off-Road Pro, which is either the one where you can turn off the traction control fully, or you can just turn it off on the rear. It's also got a horn. What mode are we in? Let's go for Sport. Sport with traction control, map sport. Yeah, we'll have a bit of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got a good bit of shove. A real good bit of, bit of torque on it. I do love a torquey bike. The engine actually feels, even though it's a parallel twin, because of that 270 degree crank, it's got a real V-twin sort of nature to it. There's a few little vibes. When you, when you start to rev it a little bit, I can feel a bit of vibe through the seats. Not excessive. There's also a little bit of vibration in the, uh, in the grips, the end of the bars, because you know, it's quite a wide bar. I guess it's amplified because it's a wide bar as well. There's a little bit of vibes there, but it's nothing to worry about. It's no worse than, say, the Africa Twin, you know, another twin or any other parallel twin basically I'd say it's no worse than any of those other parallel twins from a vibration perspective I must say with the high mud guard it is like a dirt bike you get a lot of water coming up over you so I think if you're gonna ride one of these all, all year round even though that high mud guard looks fantastic from a practical perspective or you know weather protection perspective I don't think it's the best option if, if there's water on the roads like there is today you go over sort of 30 miles an hour and that starts spraying up into your face. And let's be honest, nobody likes a golden shower. Well, bless your TMF. Yes, well, you get your clothes on. I'll buy you an ice cream. Yeah, there's definitely less at the top of the rev range. Let's see where the main, where it feels like you've got sort of the most drivability from the engine as you rev it it runs out of puff unlike you know the Thruxton RS which I borrowed and I loved from earlier on in the year that kept on pulling right to the rev line red line this you can see is definitely tuned for lower down and as you rev it it's almost like why am I revving it I'm as a change gear it's that sort of feel because everything's at the bottom so it's all this is 2000 revs and that's that's where you've got it that's where the power is Let's put it down. So third gear, 2,000 revs just over. Yeah, that, that's where it's got the grunt. That's, that's your rideable rev range, I would say. It's probably from 1,000 revs to 4,000 revs. That's the sweet spot. Handling on the road, actually, it's got quite a nice feel to it for a bike, which is obviously set up to do a bit of both. It's obviously a bit of a compromise, but on the road, if it wasn't quite as slippery and treacherous as this, it slid a bit then, 
the actual handling feels really well planted and, and actually rather nice quite well weighted suspension is also lovely and supple for going over all these bumps and stuff it's not hard it feels supple there we go let's bang over here we do a walk around here shall we might as well aren't we good as any in it I love bikes where it's easy to find neutral. There's nothing more frustrating than a bike that when you stop, you've got to paddle up and down on the gear lever trying to find neutral. It's a pet hate of mine. I hate that. And there's a lot of new bikes out there these days which are like that. You'd think that would, you think, you think things like that would be things of the past, but there's a lot of new bikes where it's very hard to find neutral. The Triumphs, really nice gearboxes, very easy to find neutral. All the Suzuki's are always the same. The gearboxes on Suzuki's are beautiful really easy to find neutral bmws can be tricky uh kawasaki's can be tricky my h2 is a bit tricky to find neutral i love a nice gearbox top marks on the gearbox triumph there she is how good does she look out there that sun there oh i mean these bikes look amazing i think honestly i think it's the best looking scrambler i prefer it to the the look of the ducati scramblers i think triumph have really nailed it as far as the looks are concerned on this especially like this high mud guard yes it may not be the most practical of things when you're getting covered in water if you're out in, in weather like this but it looks 10 times better than the lower mountain mud guard this one let's just go through some of the extras i think this bike's got obviously the arrows non-standard carbon tipped arrows i'm not too sure you can get those baffles out actually and obviously i'm not going to try now this one has the sort of headlight guard stop getting chips on the head guard for off-road it also has the the led yeah, the nicer led indicators the optional led indicators i think the radiator guard will be an optional extra on this as well so i think that's all the options on this machine standard both versions have the m50 brake so really really good braking on these shower upside down forks fully adjustable the rears are an olin's unit as i say on the xe bit longer bit bigger more travel another fantastic thing about the triumphs is the quality of paint finish paint finish is really really nice and i'm pleased to see a triumph with a you know an, an interesting color scheme a nice metallic blue also has the strap, you know, the detailing of the strap over the tank, metal strap. It's just there for looks, don't think it does anything. And then the fuel cap, you've got a conventional sort of key cap. But the great with the Triumphs again is, as this bike's keyless, you can just leave, this is locked at the moment, but you could just leave that unlocked. Who steals petrol these days? I've never heard of anyone having any petrol stolen in years. But you see, you can leave that unlocked, and you don't have to get the key out to open the fuel tank, and you don't have to worry about having a keyless fuel tank, fuel cap. I hate fuel, keyless fuel caps because they malfunction. What are you going to do? Another thing the XE version has is the MCS master cylinder, the Brembo master cylinder, where you can adjust the capacity of the of the of the uh, the piston, well, the, the fluid in the actual master cylinder to adjust the, the brake feel. So you can twiddle that little twiddler, and you can adjust the brake feel. Let's power her up. Good morning, rider. Well, they've not even customised it for me. They put Good morning, Richie. On when Richie had one, they've not bothered with mine. Yeah, you've got all the info on here about your fuel range. I can't find outside air temperature, but I think it's one of those bikes where there's so much info on here, you just have to go through and play around with it all till you find out everything. So I'll have a play around with that, and I'll see what else we can discover. Right, let's hit the road again. I love that grunt, I love that shove it's got. Oh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great fun. Three weeks riding around on this scrambler. And uh, I will take it off road and I'll do a couple of other videos on it as well, why not? It's nice to have something to ride in the winter because uh, I wanna get on the dirt again. I will be borrowing some enduro bikes at some point, KTM, Husqvarna, they, they've all, all the bikes aren't ready yet, so I don't know, it must be due to Covid, you know, they're just, I don't know if it's a manufacturing delays, but all of their 2021 press fleet is still not here, so 
they're the main bikes I tend to borrow during the winter. There's also going to be some gas gas bikes as well because of course KTM owns gas gas now as well so we should better get on one of the new gas gas range. Also I'm speaking to Honda UK and I've got myself an Africa Twin for January. I've only ever ridden the Africa Twin briefly in short stints. I've got that for the whole of January so I'm going to do a few videos on that. Take it for a bit of a trip. Maybe I'll pop up north to see Richie if we can with the lockdown and everything if we're not trapped in our houses for the whole winter. So I've got the Africa Twin for a month. I'm also hoping to get on the new uh, CRF 300 again speaking to Honda and as soon as they've got a CRF 300 available we'll take that out for some laning and we'll see you know how a, if that bike is, does everything you need it to do on a budget for just doing green lanes do you need to spend seven eight thousand pound on a on a proper hardcore enduro can you make do with five grand six grand whatever it is for a CRF 300 and the big thing with that bike is of course maintenance intervals uh, 6,000 mile not six hours <laughs> so that's a massive difference so CRF 300 let's see what she's like off-road but there we go guys thanks for watching as always have a good Christmas I'll be out on this bike again quite a bit I've got this for three weeks to play on so I'm quite excited I've got this the whole Christmas period so I'll be out messing about on this again so if you're not already subscribed press the subscribe button tick that bell we will get this bike off-road as well, I promise. Not Nothing too serious, but it's going to go for a bit of laning. And uh, yeah, so uh, I will catch you next time. If I don't speak to you before, have a fantastic Christmas. If this video comes out after Christmas, then <laughs> I hope you had a good one. <laughs> and I will see you later, guys. And take care, ride safe. Enjoy yourself as best you can when you're locked in your houses. Or if you I know a lot of Germany has gone into lockdown again, you know, it's a nightmare this, but try and make the best of it. Have fun, be merry, and I will see you soon. See you later, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me.